In this tutorial, we will focus on cleaning data and flagging potentially problematic cases or values within cells within the spreadsheet here in Microsoft Excel. So Microsoft Excel has several features that make it easier to, to identify potentially problematic values within a spreadsheet or data set and to um, flag those in some way. Now, this tends to be more efficient when you use one of these approaches I'm going to demonstrate today more efficient than using what one might call the ocular test, which would be simply scanning through with your own eyes, trying to find potentially problematic values and so forth. Um, that wouldn't be such a big deal with such a small data set like we have here, but it would be much more problematic if you can imagine having hundreds or thousands of rows or cases here um, in a much larger data set or having many more variables or fields presented here. So you can imagine here with these sample data, let's say that you are an HR information system administrator. You've pulled these data, these data are from your HR information system, and they just represent basic employee information or data here. So we have the employee ID, which is each employee's unique identifier, where each employee is represented by unique row. So sometimes we call these rows cases. So each employee is a unique case and has their own row here. The next two variables are last name and first name of the employee. Then we have the job level, which is what we're going to focus on in this tutorial, where job level should range from one, which is the lowest job level in the organization, to five, which is the highest. And these are integer values or whole numbers. So there's only one, two, three, four, five, and no fractions there within. The next variable is the facility where the employee works, and you can see the locations here. Then we have the hire date and the start date, as well as whether they completed the onboarding program. So again, we're going to focus on the job level variable or field here in this particular tutorial. But if you were to go on and look at some of the other fields here to the right, these other variables such as facility, hire date, start date, and onboarding complete, there are other things that you could also um, clean up here as well. And you can apply some of the approaches that we are going to work with today to try to identify and flag potential issues with some of these other variables or fields too. OK, but let's get started with job level here. OK, so again, it should range from one to five in whole numbers. And you can see, just because there's so few cases here, if we scroll down, we see right away, there's a two digit number here. So that's problematic. And we can see it's an 11, okay? So in this case, we wouldn't necessarily need to use some of these more advanced approaches um, that I'm about to show you, which are using filters, data validation, and pivot tables. Yet, um, it's helpful sometimes to do an ocular scan or an eye scan first. Um, especially when you have smaller amounts of data. But just to be sure, I do recommend using some of the approaches that I will show you in just a second. But why might this be 11 instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5? Well, you can imagine someone who's entering the data, a human being, makes an error. They type in 1 twice, and that might be a potential explanation. Just looking at this, though, we don't know why. And this is where you'd want to find some other information or source of information, such as asking the employee themselves, the employee's supervisors, or potentially if there is paper documentation that was then um, the value was supposed to be transposed into and entered into a form that then was entered into the HR information system and the uh, what we could assume to be maybe a relational database management system. Well, uh, potentially the person mistakenly hit the one key twice here. But again, our job here is going to be to flag this because in this case, we don't have enough information. Now, if you go on and practice with some of these other variables here to the right later on uh, on your own time, you might notice that, well, you probably feel pretty comfortable correcting some of these things. So for instance, you go through here and look at the facilities. Well, you'll see that Charlotte's misspelled here, Charlotte, North Carolina, it's missing a T. Those are things you could probably feel pretty confident correcting yourself without having to go and ask someone else. Okay. So let's get started with job level and let's start with the first of the three tools I'm going to show you that you can use in Excel when cleaning and flagging potentially problematic data. Uh, the first one is filter. So if you go to the data tab here at the top, you'll notice there's these different tabs in Excel. If you go to the data tab and then you look at the filter icon here, it's in the sort and filter section, you click filter. If you do so, you'll notice that there is a little arrow that shows up here a little downward arrow. If you click on that, you'll see all the different different potential values. So this in and of itself is one way, especially if you had much um, longer set of data here with many more cases, that you could identify out of bounds values. So we know that one, two, three, four, and five for job level are inbounds. Those are all acceptable values. Not to say we know they're correct. Someone could have still misentered one of these, but we know that at least these are not uh, problematic. They're not unrealistic values here. 
but we do see the 11 here. Okay, and so one thing we can do is we can unselect all of these and just select 11 if we just want to isolate those cases, which in this case is just a single case or single employee who has that 11 value. We can click OK. And so here we see it's Horace McKay is the employee. We know that this is a wrong job level here. So again, you might ask their supervisor, you might ask the employee themselves, or find some other source of information where you can find out what is the correct job level for this person. Now, if we click on that little arrow again, the filter tab there, within the cell, which is the bottom right of the job level column there. Let's go ahead and reselect all the values here by just clicking, clicking select all and then OK. And you'll see we get all the cases again. If you want to remove the filter, all you do is highlight that column once more, click the filter icon there, and it's gone. OK, so now I'm going to show you the second approach, which is to use data validation. OK, and so this is a pretty handy tool to use. Um, we're going to highlight first the column, just like we did before with the filter. So select the column for job level and all of its corresponding values below for each of the employees. And then we're going to go to the data tab, data tools section, and specifically to the data validation uh, drop down menu here. And we're going to select the first option, which is data validation. Okay, so when we get here, we have some validation criteria that we can enter. And the first one is, what are we gonna allow? Do we want it? The default is any value. Well, we don't want that in this case. We actually have specific values that are acceptable. We know that these are integers or whole numbers. They should be one, two, three, four, and five, and no fractions or decimals. So let's go ahead and select that. The next thing that you'll see is the data. Well, how do we wanna validate these whole numbers? Are there any things that are out of bounds? And if you click on the drop down menu, you can see there's a bunch of options you could use. You could say anything greater than five or um, it, whatever your criteria are, you can select probably something that will work here. The default for us is going to work between, we want integers or whole numbers between one and five, because we know that within this organization, one is the lowest job level, five is the highest job level for employees, okay? And so then we can click okay. So now we've set that validation there. Okay, with the existing data that we have. Now we can go up to the data tab again, go over to data tools, and we can go to the data de validation dropdown once more. And now you'll see an option, or it's there before, but now that we've set the data validation, we can now circle any data that are out of bounds, or in this case, Excel refers to these as invalid data. Okay, so go ahead and click this. And sometimes it takes a second for this to appear. Okay. So you'll just have to wait a moment. And so what you'll see up here is we have, it's always gonna flag because the reason it's going to flag this particular column is if you had um, had multiple columns, it'll kind of tell you where in which columns you have potential values that are out of bounds because maybe you'd have to scroll down otherwise if you had many more cases to see that. But what's important to us is that it's going to circle that potentially problematic case. And if you had a much longer data set here in terms of more employees, you would, and you had more errors and things that need to be cleaned up, you would potentially see all of those highlighted in red there. And so then you could go through and address each one of those and find out what the correct value actually is and then correct it, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and now highlight that column again. We're gonna go back up to data, that tab, data tools, look at the data validation dropdown tool. And if you notice there's another option here below data validation and circle invalid data, there is clear validation circles. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. All right. So the last approach I'm going to show you, and there are other ways you could do this. And when it comes to actually replacing the values, you can use things like if you do with a Windows um, computer, if you do a control F, you can do a find and replace. Um, and this will allow you to say, well, okay, if we find any 11s and we know that 11s always represent, in this case, someone mistype, uh, inappropriately typing in one twice instead of one, and we want to replace it with one, we could do that as well, okay? So that can be a more efficient way to correct things at scale. So, okay, so now we're ready for pivot tables, which is the last approach I'm going to show you. This time we're moving from the data tab to the insert tab, and you will see in the tables icon here, it can look different too, depending on how open you have your window, uh, your Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. You might just see a button that says tables, then you click on it and then you'll have pivot table, recommended pivot tables and table as option. Um, in this case, because we're using the whole window view of this spreadsheet, uh, you'll see the pivot table option is, is visible right away within the tables section here of the insert tab. 
And so what we will do next is we will click pivot table, okay? And so we want to select this range of data. Often Excel is very good about identifying what your range of data actually is. We could have highlighted it ahead of time and done the work for Excel. And we are going to select a, a table or range. Again, this is automated for us. It's, it's um, found cell A1 all the way through H16, which is what it says here. And then let's go ahead and just move this to a new worksheet. You could choose to make the pivot table in the existing worksheet. We'll just create a new worksheet down here. Um, and that way it'll be hopefully a little bit cleaner for you to see here. It's really up to you how you do that. Next thing you'll do in the create pivot table window is click okay. Okay, so now we're in the pivot table um, window. You can see we have a new sheet here called sheet, sheet two. Sheet one is still there. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to click on um, job level, okay? And so next right here under the pivot table fields, which is another way name for variables in this case, we have job level, we just click the box next to it. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to drag that job level into the rows box here down below. So we've dragged the field down into this below, okay? Now you'll see over here, it's changed the, the pivot table a little bit. And you can see that it does show us right away that we have the out of bounds 11 value. But what it's doing by default is it's summing up the values. So this just represents that we had um, one person with a value of one, for instance, okay? And so this is just when you have, since here it just means that three times, or 15 divided by three means we have five people with threes in the data set and so forth. So it's just summing all the numeric values there, okay? Um, that's not what we want in this case. Let's click on the sum of job level, this field here, and then go all the way down to the scroll down bar to value field settings. Let's select that option. And let's select count here. So another word for frequency is a count. And so instead of summing up those values, those numeric values, those whole number values, let's go ahead and just do count and click OK and we'll get the frequencies. Okay, so why is this helpful? Well, this can tell you how many cases are potentially problematic and how many need to be um, addressed. So this can be useful for understanding how big of a problem you have in terms of how unclean the data are for this particular variable here. Okay, and so you can see that um, again, for one, two, three, four, five, everything's within bounds, but we can see that we have for the value of 11, for the job level field or variable, we have one person. So a count of one that is where there's an error here. It's out of bounds. It's beyond one to five here, okay? So this just tells us the, the scale. We knew this already, but this can be useful for kind of diagnosing the problem that you have. Now, you can go through and do the same thing with all the other variables here that you have access to. Um, and these are, or fields is, if you want to call them that, as you go through and clean and try to understand the potential issue or problem there, okay? And so that's how pivot tables can be quite useful. Alternatively, you could have just selected job level, um, the field by itself before you went to insert. And you could have clicked on pivot table there. And this case, we're just gonna focus on a single column here and you could just leave everything default. And now we have a third sheet, and now you'll see we only have job level as the option. You would do the same thing, drag it down to rows, go over to the value and sum of job level. Let's go to value field settings, change that to count just like we did before. And now we get the same thing as we had before, okay? But except now we have a blank row um, because we selected the entire column here, which includes some blanks, which are irrelevant for us at this point. Okay, so that's how you would go about uh, cleaning up the job or at least flagging values in the job level. Again, sometimes things are gonna be more readily apparent that there are errors. So as I mentioned before, if you were to do the same thing with let's say um, the facility variable where maybe you decide that it's appropriate to use the filter function here, okay? And see like, okay, how in range are these values? Okay, so we can see there's a problem here. There should just be one Charlotte, North Carolina and one Omaha. But right off the bat, you can see when you look at this that there is a Charlotte, North Carolina that's misspelled where Charlotte should have two T's and only has one. You can see a Charlotte where it's missing the state of uh, comma in C. And then you can see the correct one below. So we would wanna go in and correct these two. So, okay. And let's go ahead and flag as well. The same issue with Omaha. It should be Omaha comma, comma NE for Nebraska. So let's select these 
uh, all cases that have these potentially problematic um, values here, okay, and click OK. All right, and so this is where you might actually feel comfortable going in and actually changing this to what you would consider to be the correct values. So that should be Charlotte comma NC, this should be Omaha in, comma NE for Nebraska, and then correct Charlotte to have two T's comma NC, okay? And so now if you go back and you select all, or you look at this, you'll see now we just have three unique values uh, or categories for the facility someone works in, which is correct. Okay. If we had worked with the previous data when they were they were messy or dirty, we would have assumed that there were maybe five or six different facilities people were working in, even though we know that not to be true. Okay, And that's where spelling mistakes can come in. This is where good data validation or having drop down menus in the form that people are using to enter the data into the database management system can be incredibly value. You really open, uh, we open ourselves up for a lot of human error when we allow people to enter things into unvalidated blank fields. All right, well, um, that's all I'm gonna show in this tutorial. Again, you could go on with some of these other variables here or fields and clean them up further, um, but that's beyond the scope of what we're gonna be doing um, today in this tutorial. You can take these ideas and apply them to all different types of um, data you might work with in HR or any type of um, data that you might work with, especially when the data are organized such that columns represent unique va variables or fields and the rows represent unique cases or observations. All right, thank you very much.